Justine and I'm here at Google I.O. and I had so much fun watching the presentation and now I'm going to head over and chat with Sundar, the CEO of Google. He just left the stage, so let's go have a chat. Thank you so much for sitting down, and I'm just so excited. This is actually my first I.O. Oh, well, welcome, and you, you timed it well. We are back in person in Shoreline. Did you enjoy it? I did. Did you enjoy it? Oh, yeah, of course. I loved, you know, it took me a while to get used to having audience back and the reactions back, and so I had to, I had to go through an adjustment, I think, but I loved being here. Oh, like in, the, in the auditorium, too, it was just like feeling that energy. I feel like everyone missed that. And I, I hope it continues. I think it's time for people to come back. and. Sure get on with our lives. I felt like watching the presentation, it really felt like Google was trying to be additive to technology and not something that's like distracting in your life. So how do you feel that that kind of carries through towards Google's mission? No, it is, you know, if you, if you go back to search, search was always about trying to get you the answer as quickly as possible and, and not the focus was that. And so in some ways, I think a lot of what you saw today is people are living their lives, doing what they're trying to do, we want to find those moments where if they need help, be helpful as quickly and efficiently as possible. So yeah, that affects how we think about it. And it's incredible with your whole career at Google too, and you've been there for so long. So what's it been like to really see the entire tech industry just change, like right before your eyes, and even having like a huge part in that? Well, I mean, it is, I mean, who, who would have thought the internet would reach where it is today? And, uh, you know, I couldn't have quite foreseen it, but, you know, early on I realized that finally you have a medium which is going to, you know, pretty much touch everyone in the world eventually. And so it's been thrilling to be part of that ride. And uh, being at Google gives you a chance to do that at scale and impact a lot of people. So, uh, but I think, look, the, the great thing about technology is for, for people who are young and coming into it, the next decade, the next two decades are going to have as much evolution and as many new things as what we, you know, I've seen in my last two decades. So I think that's, that's the great thing about technology. Is there any key moment that you're like, that was the most meaningful thing that you felt that had like this huge impact? Towards the end, when it all comes together, you know, when we are investing in AI and trying to help people as we are testing the prototype and giving it to people who could be, you know, either deaf or hard or hearing or didn't understand a language, you know, that's where you see how it can all come together and, and touch people's lives. And so I think that's the potential of technology the kind of thing which makes me get up in the morning and uh, come into work, so that's what I would say. Yeah, and I feel like now, even just with the internet and being able to touch that many lives is so incredible, and I think accessibility is so important. I mean, how do you guys kind of go through that whole process of deciding what is something that you need to include for accessibility and kind of just carry that through? You know, yeah, I mean, we've deeply cared about it in our mission, and so, you know, if anything, we're constantly across every product be it getting to everyone in the world, uh, trying to make it as affordable as possible, and making sure we are thinking through deeply for people with disabilities uh, and, and working to make sure the products work for them. All of it, there's a lot of work still left to do. One thing I would say is AI offers new opportunities to do it in a, in a way we couldn't have solved it before. And so that's what, why when you look at things like translation or transcription or all that, I think offers us to support these groups better than ever before. You guys have talked so much about AI and it's weird and kind of also interesting when I talk to my non-tech friends, their kind of perception of AI. Like you think of what you see in these big high budget movies, like mm -hmm. robots running around everywhere. And like, that's not the actual reality of it. So do you want to talk a little bit about like what AI actually is and how you guys kind of implement it in all of your devices? Look, I mean, in many ways, the kind of AI we are talking about is as humans, like you and I are using language fluently. We are looking at each other, we have context. All this is very, very hard for computers to do. So we are trying to make progress and make computers be a bit smarter. And, and using AI to make those things better. But it offers promise in a different way because the same AI can be an expert on many topics. So it could be like you're talking to a thousand different experts on any topic, right? That's the potential. So you can imagine a kid in the future being able to learn on any topic, uh, regardless of where they're growing up, what access they have. So that's the potential we see. But when we speak about AI, a lot of it is about how do we use that to bring more knowledge to more people? And so that's how we think about it. I love that too, because learning, I learned almost everything that I know now from Google and watching YouTube videos. And I feel like a lot of kids learn in different ways. And a lot of times classrooms aren't equipped for that. So the fact that you guys are building that out and also making it accessible is just 
I think that's it. Really, is life changing. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I wish I had YouTube when I was growing up. I've learned on so many topics uh, by, particularly even through the pandemic. Just YouTube was a place I would go learn from uh, creators like you. And so, you know, hopefully, this is all part of that journey in uh, making it easier for people. By the way, AI also one one feature we launched today was to automatically create chapters in YouTube videos. You know. Uh, yeah. The crowd goes wild. I'm going to put in a sound effect here. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing too, because you know, you're trying to find that information quickly. And the fact that those chapters are automatic, yeah. I cannot wait to try it. Yeah. We're still talking about AI and because Google is such a huge company, you guys can literally do anything. So I feel like you guys have a responsibility to kind of set those mm -hmm. principles. And I know you talked a little bit about that. Do you want to expand a little more on that? You know, I mean, obviously it's a, uh, uh, you know, profound technology and both will have useful things can be misused, can have harmful effects. So at a, from a ground up, we have to think about it, right? And so we, we have publicly stated AI principles and it has seven core areas. You see some of that work today when we talked about monk scale or what we did in our cameras last year, across a range of skin tones, being able to capture that well on camera is an example of the kind of responsible AI work uh, work we are doing. So we are thinking it through across everything we do. I love the demonstration that you guys did with Lambda 2. And that kind of conversational technology is really just, it's so impressive. And the fact that you could make those lists, like which one was your favorite? Oh, yeah, I you know, played around with it so much. What's stunning for me is how it breaks down every topic. And then it makes you think about things which you wouldn't have thought of. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I think I vaguely tried planning a party and seeing all the stuff. And even for something you think you know, it surprises you. There is a creativity to all this. And, you know, you can imagine you're anywhere, like a planet made of ice cream, and you can think through that. So you can imagine being an author and you're writing something and you can play with it to get inspiration. And so that is the power of what if, if we can get all this to work well, that's the power power ahead. Uh, another thing is I love your kind of initial story of kind of, you know, working with Chrome. And that was really impactful for me because I feel like a lot of my career has been people telling me I shouldn't do this or I shouldn't do that. And when you have sort of that conviction that something is something and yeah. it can be something like that's really was touching for me. So like, do you have any advice for any young entrepreneurs or creators or developers who are kind of getting started and how to kind of combat hurdles? No, it's good. Look, I, mean, I think it's important to remember uh, you're going to have setbacks. It doesn't go exactly the way you, some, sometimes it does, but that's rare. For most people, it kind of meanders and, you know, it takes longer than you think it is. I think working with people who you think are very good, I think that's important. Working something which kind of clicks inside you, you feel it. If you, if you work on something you like, you will feel it inside. And I think that's important to try and find it if you can. And so if you do that and you're doing your best, that's what's in your control. And as I said earlier to young entrepreneurs, there's no better time to be a young entrepreneur. Like I would ignore what's happening in the short term. Like there is so much opportunity ahead over the next 10 years or 20 years. I think to creators, there, you know, there's no better time to be a creator. And so, you know, that's how I would think about it. Yeah, and I guess one last question, I guess the future of tech, I mean, it's all moving so quickly. So what is your kind of big picture vision for the next five to 10 years? From our standpoint, you know, we, we are working on, you know, given our goal is to help give access to knowledge. We think computing is going to evol evolve dramatically over the next 10 years. You know, we will evolve beyond phones. And you saw some hints at the end of what we think that world will be. And so building that out and putting it in people's hands and it's something we are super excited by. That's so awesome. Well, thank you so much for chatting and thank you to my audience for watching. I know they're gonna be so excited. Subscribe and click on the bell. Yes. Like and comment on the video. Oh, All right. <laughs> this is the best day ever. <laughs> Can we get a selfie? Of course. Oh my gosh, this is incredible. All right, here we go. All right. Awesome. Got All right. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. It's so nice to meet you. <laughs> Trying to keep up pace with your selfie skills. <laughs> So this was both of our first Google IOs, yes. which was so much fun. And you are a veteran. Yes, uh, it's 17, 18, 19. Oh, wow. Years, yeah. And he did not tell us that it was cold. It was very cold. It I'm was sorry, freezing. guys. Freezing. I had a lot of fun. Yeah. I can't wait to see your interview. I can't wait to yeah, see yours. I can't wait to see your <laughs> yeah, because we couldn't hear anyone. Yeah. yeah. So guys, make sure you go check out both of their videos. I'll put links in the description. And I think that's a wrap on yeah. Google yeah. IO. I gotta go to the airport now. Me too. So you. You're leaving tomorrow. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> <No way. laughs> Bye.